After even, even after after someone has even studied and become a good and, and, and pass up a, a first pass a first class degree, and now when the person leaves, there's no respect for graduates. That's my next point. No respect for graduates. Twenty eighteen when I went to this school, I remember living in the church program. Even in the church, we advised to go to the program when we witness the convocation. Unfortunately, when we go there, the best graduate student of the whole prestigious university of Nigeria, that is the only university that has Nigeria in its name. The best graduate student was given an award. Of, of, of a peanut, and it's 25,000 or 50,000 naira to show for all our efforts of being the best graduating students of the whole state. Nigeria and Africa as a whole is plagued with leaders who lack vision. And in fact, I know that most people might come and say, no, it is corruption that is actually scam in this country, or it's corruption that is the major problem we have in this country. In as much as the corruption happens to be a citizen of this country already, it is not the problem we have in this country. Rather, we have the problem we have in this country are leaders who are not visionary and competent leaders. Now, by the of adjudicators, if you look at the world as a whole, you will notice that no system is completely devoid of corruption. But rather, it's why it's, it, they have this you know, problem of this corruption here and there. But they have leaders who have vision and is backed up with great competence. Ladies and gentlemen, we have that starting from the president, we have that politicians strive to get into positions of power without having a plan, without having a vision. They just want to, okay, we have Mr. President. He attempted to be president four times. And now he's president only to give us this. Meaning that all this way he has attempted to be president, he has no plan to develop this economy. He has no vision for this economy, this economy. And he has no plan to develop the very basis of any economy of the world, which is education. Ladies and gentlemen, in the year 2020, last year, the government allocated 5.6% of its budget to education. And it's around 82 billion naira, so it sounds big. But the problem now is that it's against the UNESCO benchmark for the education system of any economy. UNESCO states that every economy should allocate 26% of its what, budget to its academic educational sector. And Nigeria has consistently failed in this. Now, it is common practice every year that universities are completely shut down. That is, lectures are on strike, no academic activity, because these lecturers are begging, simply begging, properly fund these universities. Not just that, pay off our, pay off our salary, provide a conducive environment for students to learn. That is all we ask for. Just like the popular Nigerian musician said, in 2020, 19 in Halloween. So they are in 2021, and lecturers are begging to be paid salaries of 2013, begging to be paid salaries of 2015. How is this education scam? Now, most times you have like this association, like, okay, the mid different ministries saying there's no money, no money to give these lecturers, you guys should go back to school, we're going to take care of you people later. But you know the most painful part of this? And Senator, Senator Shell Sani, representing Kaduna Central, said that as a senator, he has received. 13.5 million naira every month, not as his allowance, not his salary, but what is known as running costs. And at the end of the day, a lecturer and senator is giving 200 million naira as constituency fund. Now, which of us here even knows that a, a member of your constituency receives this amount of money to take care of your, your people? Who knows? I just found that out. Sorry. So, this is to tell you that it is not education that is scam. It is not this institution that has been established by the medicine as to enhance our lives that is scam. Rather, it is these people we have voted into different positions of power that is the real scam. Now, I, I know we all think scam is, um, or general notion is that scam is any activity that is fraudulent, right? Yes. But let me tell you how these incompetent leaders are fraudulent things here. Now, we, they come every year, okay, after four years, during election, asking us to campaign for them, asking us to vote for them, you know, talking, they'll be, they'll be bridges in the air, doing a lot of things, and we entrust our existence into the hands of these people. Now, at the end of the day, they are voted into power. Every during election, sacrifices are made, blood is shed, so that we vote into people, into power, people that will take this country forward. And at the end of the day, we are scammed. They bring the uh, Nigeria that used to be the fastest developing economy in Africa has lost that position. In fact, if you're in Nigeria and you say you're a giant of Africa, even Ghanaians won't even look at you because we have lost our place in the world because of the competent, incompetent leaders we have. Ladies and gentlemen, that is, that is why, after all this consideration, when the members of the team opposition have come up to say, no, not this institution, this institution called school is no scam. Rather, it is the, it is the, the people we have, um, you know, voted into different positions of power that are what the real scam. School is an institution where you come to learn, right? 
But education surpasses school. It is something that is lifelong. School is the mission. Education is the vision. But unfortunately, our schools have refused to know this vision. They are now interested in things that are no longer of value to the student's empowerment or even improvement. Our topic today says school has come. Mind the language. The language says pidgin English. And this pidgin English is only accepted in four countries in Africa. Guinea Republic, Cameroon, Nigeria, and Ghana. Probably the people that brought out this topic knew that they didn't want us to go far. They want us to tackle the educational system and the schooling system in this country. In fact, school has been scammed in our, in our countries. These countries are pigeon speaking. For instance, now, if the topic was Igbo Queen, of course, even if we argue in English, Concentrating on Igbos, not Yorubas. Am I not right? Of course. School NASCAM. With this point, I am going to tell you in the, our school in Nigeria and all these pigeon speaking countries are scam. School NASCAM because we are only exposed to selected ideas. They know that our first speaker came, Uncle Paul. He elaborated on these curriculums. He called them unnecessary curriculums. Curriculums and syllabus we use to teach students with. These, most of the times, these curriculums and these curriculums and syllabus are not even based on student interest and passion. This system is being invested more over there. Could you imagine that American government puts a huge amount of effort, effort, effort to one dollar into its academic academic system in contrary to the Nigerian government who just put 2.6% of its entire budget. Now, why would you blame school as an institution? Why not blame the government who didn't give you or fund the school to produce more? Education involves psychological, mentally, and physical trauma. With that, your child pass throughout the entire life if she didn't die under the pressure. Do you know that she can be even unfortunate to suffer from the condition which we call BVF? Vesico vaginal fistula, a condition whereby the bladder no longer goes to you. Imagine if your bladder no longer goes to you. Dear school, it's never a scam. This is the reason why we have to be enlightened. School enlightens us deeper in order to solve many problems. Take for instance, school enlightens us in solving problems. School is the powerhouse for enlightenment. This can't this can be scammed because individuals on the basis of human life have the ability to defend their life, which can also give you the confidence in which you need and not to be intimidated. Imagine when you talk to that girl in your village and you come up wearing your high heels, dress properly dressed, and you be like, hey, girl, leave that place. Don't you think that she will obey you with that speed? Can you say that to a fellow human being who has seen the four words of school? She'll be like, what's the problem? What do you need? This is because she's a right on her rights and she have known how to fight for it. My dear, school can be scam. If actually we hope that school should teach us where to prop money or how to do money. No. School teaches you the things, the requirements you need to work on and make money. Money that will last. They don't spread money. They give you what you need to make money because they have potential and school helps you to bring it out. So with this, I hope I'm able to convince you that school is never and can never be a scam. And education as the powerhouse of the national economy. Research and education. The whole idea aims to tell you what you know, or to remind you what you already know, or to re-emphasize the importance of what you already know. You are fully abreast of an aspect. Some other aspect you don't even have a full grip or grasp of what it's all about. Our country
country is where we are today because of the negligence of what we are going to talk about, or what we are already talking about. Of all that have won Nobel Prize, in all sphere of life, sciences, art, humanities, social sciences, they are Jews. If you like all them American Jews, or Jew Jews, they are Jews. And I said, Israel is Israelis growth and economic vibrancy is because of their functional education and impactful and development oriented research. Did you hear what I just said? I said functional education. You know sometimes um, the current final year students I was teaching them statistics sometimes to this year or before I got to COVID, yes. And then I asked a lady what she's going to do. And then she said, as soon as she's through with the degree, business. And then I said, what about business? She said, food business. And then we interrupted. And then I felt a little ashamed. What is the reason? I said, the things we teach these students, have they been equipped sufficiently to leave these things and stand on their own? If you look down, down the aircraft size, the 40 year students, most part of last week, you know what they were using? Boom. Actually, the department has brought a tractor to plow, arrow, and reach the land. But the ridges were so poorly done that you would think you are still in the forest. So the students were assigned ridges they were going to plant on. And they spent days trying to remold it. There are enough of waste. Wastage in terms of funding of findings that are not utilized. The emphasis is that citizens must be trained and educated properly to transcend stone age behaviors, attitude, and values. We're talking about economic summit. We're talking about business summit. And we are talking about how we can grow our nation. We are talking about how we can be better off. And we are saying that the essentiality of your education is that you come out of stone age behavior. That you have attitudinal changes that you the value system will be different than what it used to be. I like listening to students. I like interacting. And once in a while when our students, faculty of Wagner, are doing cultural things, they do it behind my office. My office is that Cardoso building there, in the open field. And when I see behaviors, attitudes, value system, I want to weep for a nation. It was an enter plane, and it was full. That hotel left his seat, and the person entered that. And Bishop Dawson prophesied. You can see him today. God is no respecter of anybody. He says he doesn't matter. 
I said you are educated. But you have learned to respect people. You have learned to be humble. You have learned to relate. You have learned to bend down your neck. Then you are ready for greatness. You are ready for emancipation. You are ready for success. OBJ, OBJ, true or false, you have one chance. 20 seconds. Okay, question 25 says, to win anything, you must be willing to do what? To win in anything, you must be willing to do what? Desire. Wrong answer. Question number one. Number one. For those who succeed, their turning point comes after what? For those who succeed, their turning point comes afterwards. is a composite of our habits. Option A, character. B, attitude. Expression, C, expression. D, belief. Character. Correct. Number 44. It says, one can be ineffective in interactions because as one constantly tells people what he or she thinks, one never dash. One can be ine ineffective in interactions because as one constantly tells people what he or she thinks, one never dash. Can you speak up? What's wrong? Next person. 35. 35. Habits are used in harmony with a natural law, with, with a natural law, a principle called dash H slash slash H C. That's option A. B is P slash P C. C is B slash B A. D is P slash P A. Please come again. Habits are used in harmony with a natural law, a principle called dash. From A H slash B C, B P slash B C, C B slash B A, D P slash B A. Option A. Wrong. Forty. Forty. Okay. Question fourteen says the principles outlined in Tin and Burridge was gotten from the lives of how many successful men? The principles outlined in Tin and Burridge was gotten from the lives of how many successful men? A. One thousand. B. Ten thousand. C. Twenty-five thousand. D. Five thousand.
family is different and it's in different shapes. Some of us came out from a background due to circumstances of life. You may have been raised by a single parent, either mother or father. It may be a situation of either a family problem, either one of the parents died, or there was a problem, there was separation, or that there was a, 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 a divorce case arose. But whatever happened, it is not any of your faults. It's just a circumstance of life. So we said that only a living person can do business. And since we are coming from every family, I want us to know when we talk of business, it's not we are not talking about the woman in the, in the the woman in the uh, man or woman in the market the, uh, the market or what that has shop. Whatever you do for a living is your business. For you as a student, you are while you are studying in school, that's your business. The worker in the office, that job you're doing is your business. So whatever you find doing is your business. And it is important that you take it very, very important that you're con very conscientious about that business. So one of the things I want to talk about is that what the Bible says, what can you give in exchange for your life? What can you give in exchange for your life? That business you're doing, are you going to give it in exchange for your soul? Every business we do have a time frame. And of course, we don't live forever on earth. But we have a time frame that we live. And whatever you do, you are going to give account to your creator at whenever he calls you. So there is a Bible quotation we have, Luke chapter 2, 13 to 12, 13 to 21. It's a story about a rich young fool. There were two brothers, one asked, came to Jesus and said, Tell my brother to divide what we have, so that you take his own and I'll take my own. Jesus looked at him and said, Beware of covetousness. That whatever a man, that what a man has does not depend, that a, a man's life does not depend on the abundance of the things he possesses. And of course, what may begin to say, does it mean that he does not want us to do business and get rich? No. And there is a beware of covetousness. You see, a, 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 a normal human being is prone to greed and covetous. And you see, when you get into the business world, you will find out that there is a tendency. Whether it's a partnership business, it's a company or whatever, some people want to do, I do the other person. You don't need it. When you partner with people in business, it's a, a, that business, you should ever make it in very, very, to come out so, uh, uh, successful. And when it comes out successful, you share whatever be the dividend. Thank you very much. Uh, let me add to what she said. Um, looking around, I have been excited about this uh, seminar. Because uh, I teach in the university, I'm used to being with young people like you. Because I was once a young person like he, isn't it? And um, so I enjoy company of young people. And when I came and saw what was going on, I remember the many, many years ago when I was like uh, some of you. And um, when I thought about this topic, that family is the first business, I said this is very, very important because there are many people who, when they get into business, they choose the business, they put the business as number one, put
put their lives as number two, and then put their family as number three, and then put God as number four or five or six, that kind of thing. But that is not the right thing. As you can see, we have said that God should be number what? God should be number one. Then of course, your life, your family will now come in. And there are many people who are very, very successful in business. But their family is a terrible failure. I don't know if what I heard is true. I read it in the social media, was it last week or two weeks ago? And they said that, uh, what's his name? The founder of Microsoft, Bill Gates. I hope that's the name. That, is it true that he divorced or he's planning to divorce? What did you hear? Is it that he divorced or he's planning to divorce? You know, when I heard it, I was shocked. I said, how can such a role model? I know if I ask the question now, maybe I don't put it as a quiz, I say, how many of you want to be as rich as Bill Gates? I know many people will raise their hands. Ah, somebody's already. <laughs> when you, as a young man, propose to a young girl to marry, have in mind that it is for life. And when as a young girl, a young man comes to you, and tells you, ah, um, he says, your leg is straight, uh, your nose is pointed. Um, what are the other things you people say? That uh, you are the sugar in my tea, the honey in my, you know, just know that if you want to say yes to that young man, that it is, he is somebody you, you are going to live with for the rest of your life, you have to be convinced about that. And when you are convinced about that, then that is when you can say yes. Some time ago, at the Delhi Gwen, we went for Christian evangelism. I and some other people. We entered a particular room. And uh, in fact, I don't know who owned the room. I saw a girl there. I saw a boy there. The girl was cooking and serving, I think it was rice or so. And then the boy was lying somehow. And, uh, well, we just uh, talked to them about giving their lives to Christ. And when we finished, I said, I, I started asking them whether they are living together. I found that they have been living together. They were staying together. Cohabiting. And I think that's the wrong way to start life. So, if you want to make a good business in marriage, don't behave like that. Because that, 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 that person is, is like a rich fool. If you are a young girl, and maybe you are cooking rice, and the boy came, and you serve rice, and after serving the rice, uh, some other things started happening, and then you find that you're taking the wrong step. So what I'm just saying is that if you want your marriage to be a good business, don't start by living together. Don't start by living together. You have to wait until uh, you go to the parents, do all the things they require, go and work properly. Because it has been found that many people who divorce, 
and those who started like that. So when they start with the wrong food, they will end with the wrong uh, food. I hope what I'm saying makes sense. Okay. Then, let me just say a few more things before we go to the question and answer session. Then we also find out that if you want to make a good business in marriage, once you marry somebody, you should determine ab initio to be faithful to that person. That in a bit to acquire money, our own family is also preserved. Very, very important. One day, I was reading about uh, who is the richest man in Nigeria. Is he still that good? I was reading about him. And I wanted to find out who is Mrs. Dangote. I don't know if anybody has that answer. Because I couldn't find the name of Mrs. Dangote. I don't even know if there is a Mrs. Dangote associated with Aliko Dangote. So, maybe later on, I don't know if um, the moderator has the answer. So, but the key thing is that when you, make, when you want to make a successful businessman, make sure also that you take time and look at your own married life. I know that all of us say I want to be married, isn't it? Is there somebody who doesn't want to be married here? All of us want to be married. Isn't it? I want to have a happy marriage. And like she said, even if your own parents don't have a happy marriage, God can, make, can help you and your own marriage, just as we want you to be richer than we are, we also want you to have a marriage that is happier than our own marriages. I want you to say amen. amen. And there are things that will help you do that. Let me just mention a few of them. Number one, it is God, if you remember, that when God wanted to make man, he said, let us make man in our own image. And then he made us in his own image, and then he made us male and female. And later on in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible tells us in verse 18 that God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Because Adam was alone. God said, it is not good for him to be alone. That he will make him a helper suitable for him. And then he created uh, Madame. Do we call her Madame Ada? <laughs> Mrs. Ivada. Would that be the correct name? So God created the woman. And look at what happened. When she came to Adam, Adam said, Wow! This is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. Okay. Uh, this woman matter. I don't want to get involved. The woman matter. When she gets money from there, we do be out of it. I'm asking the guys, we don't be out of their business. As long as it brings money in the house, you will be involved. So get interested in whatever your, your husband or your wife do, uh, uh, does. Thank you. Now, um, now we begin. Thank you, Prof, and thank you, Ma, for being here today. Now, for a marriage that lasted for 33 years, it's a big inspiration. It's uh, especially owing to what's happening in today's world. But I'm listening keenly to know, to hear certain things, but you have, you have been talking about how you need to discuss, be sure that you guys agree with the two, whatever this and that before you go into the in marriage. I, I didn't hear you talk about love. So, is there a particular reason for that? Thank you, MC. Love. 
Why is the spelling? L O V E. Wow. And then there's another one called uh, Lost. L U S T. The true love that we have in marriage, uh, we didn't use the word love, but when we say that marriage is for life, we meant that it is only love, it is true love that you can hold your marriage for life. True love does not want um, only for himself or herself. True love considers the other person. True love honors. And true love knows that you are both accountable. True love shows responsibility. But what many people call love, um, when I, when I move around the university, I see some young boys, they are holding, holding a young girl, and then they are walking. And some of you say that thing is love, but it is not. Uh, it is lost. Eh? The reason is that a young girl, you have not paid any dowry. You have not paid the bride price. You have not, you don't have a certificate. I can hold her because I have the certificate. <laughs> One section of married and relationship. Okay, I want to say something that struck my heart before I go to announce. Um, she said something. She, she said, analyze that tree before you make the travel. So, a lot of us are planning to be businessmen, career women, career men, like Ali Kodangute, about two. But try to analyze the trip that you want to make, that business trip. There's a place that leads you to Telegram, all right? So you can get it, it's already there. So you can check it at our Telegram channel. 